Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense, back with some first impressions for you guys. Today, I've got Dolce & Gabbana, the one Eau de Parfum Intense. I actually got this in the mail uh, from Manny at Cascade Scents back maybe two weeks ago, but I haven't been able to crack into this until now because of the trip that I took to Japan. Kind of got in the way of making new videos for a little bit, so. I've had this for a while. It's actually for sale now at Macy's in the US, so you can buy it at Macy's.com. When I had him send it to me, it wasn't available in the US yet, but now it is. I've also got this one by Tower, Andy Tower, uh, L'Air des Alpes Suisse. Terrible French, I apologize. Air of the Swiss Alps. I've been wanting this for a very, very long time and now I've got it. So I'm gonna do a first impression on that. And then last but not least, from DS and Durga, Burning Barbershop. I picked this one up off of Facebook actually. So it's been used, as you can see. I mean, not too much, there's still a lot left in there, but I got this from a Facebook group for 65 bucks. So really good deal and shout out to you person that I bought this from. I don't know if you want me to mention your name, but you know who you are. So, three fragrances, two niche, one designer. Let's jump into this. First up, I'm gonna smell Burning Barbershop because it's already opened, so might as well. There's a story on the back of the box here. There's a story associated with each DS and Durga fragrance, and then the notes are listed on the box here as well. I'll go ahead and read the story for you guys really quickly so you know how this is supposed to smell. A fire broke out in the Curling Bros Barbershop in Westlake, New York in 1891. All the shaving tonics with their spearmint, lime, vanilla, and lavender burned. A charred bottle was found half full. It smelled like this. So that's burning barbershop for you. I'll show you guys the bottle here really quickly. There it is, Burning Barbershop. And this is in that new Dias and Durga bottle style, which is the same style of bottle that my bow maker's bottle is in that I showed on a recent video. Notes for this one are spearmint, lime, and hemlock spruce in the top, lavender absolute, tuberose, and Turkish rose in the mid, and then burnt oil, vanilla, and hay in the base. As you can see in the box here, it says Dias and Durga. Give it a pull. It comes out like so, and the bottle sits down in here. I'm going to go ahead and spray this one onto my hand here. Dias and Durga is a house that I've been trying to get more fragrances from. Uh, I'm really interested by them, and they make very, very good fall and winter time fragrances, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of their fragrances do share similarities here or there, but they're done very well. I'm talking more specifically about those fall and winter time based scents. So you definitely get the spruce off of the top. It's got that uh, almost coniferous green woody nature to it. A little bit of mint, a little bit of lime, just a, a slight fresh pop in the opening, but not too much of it. Even right off the top, this one is more of a, a woody, yeah, like a, a woody, uh, almost resinous tree resin kind of fragrance in the opening. A little bit of soapiness here, just a little bit, not too much though. And that's gonna be the lavender, the lavender absolute in the mid. You can pick that up pretty early. Quality here is good, it's what I expected. This one actually reminds me a little bit, a little, very little bit, of fragrances like uh, Winter Nights by uh, Dacine. And if I pronounced that incorrectly, I apologize. Flame away in the comments if you must. But yeah, this fragrance, right here. It does not smell the exact same as this fragrance at all. I'm just saying in the initial opening, the way that it has that kind of green coniferous, like I said, tree resin kind of vibe going on, it reminds me of something like that. 100% for me, fall and winter time, this isn't something I'd wanna wear in spring or summer. Not a high heat kind of fragrance. And while this is a little bit barbershoppy, a little bit, it's not much. This is not something like uh, your classic Paco Rabanne Pour Homme or Jazz or uh, Reeve Gosh or anything like that, at least not in the opening. It's more a twist, a twist on the barbershop fragrance because 
like I said, it has that lavender. It's got a little bit of that soapiness, but it's offset with those darker woody notes with the burnt oil that's in here, the hay that's in the base as well. It's an interesting fragrance. It smells nice. I'm glad I picked this up. 65 bucks, absolute steal. Quality here, as I said before, is good. It's one that I'll get some wear out of in the fall and winter months. Uh, where it's heading into March, probably won't get a whole bunch of use out of this until, you know, coming October. But glad that I got it for 65 bucks. This is really solid. Next up, let's do Dolce & Gabbana, the one Eau de Parfum Intense. So this one comes with a little sleeve. You don't see that very often. So you can see it right here, a sleeve over top the box. And this is 100% legit. This came from Hudson's Bay in Canada, which is a major retailer up there, if you're not familiar with them. So let me show you this sleeve really quickly. There we go. This is what comes over top the box, at least over top my box. And then the box itself is pretty plain, just black and gold. So there it is, Dolce & Gabbana, the one Eau de Parfum Intense. Let's go ahead and open this one up. I have not watched any videos on this one, no reviews or anything like that. I've heard rumblings online where some people have said, oh, it's really, really good. It's fantastic, what a great release. And then other people have said, oh, it's not that good. It's a crappy release, Dolce & Gabbana, how dare you? So I've heard a bit of both sides. Here's the back of the box with your ingredients and your badge code and barcode down there on the bottom. This is your typical Dolce & Gabbana The One bottle style, only this one is all black, other than the gold lettering and the gold on the neck of the bottle here. So here we go, a good look at your bottle for Dolce & Gabbana The One Eau de Parfum Intense with your badge code down there on the bottom. Can't smell too much from the atomizer. I mean, it's not been sprayed, so of course, and go ahead and check this one out. Here we go, a couple sprays. I can smell it a little bit from right here. It smells very sweet. Yeah, yeah, there's a good amount of sweetness there. I'm not sure how to view this one right off the bat. It's not one of those fragrances where I immediately love it or immediately hate it. I'm kind of just taking it in at the moment and trying to figure out how this one you know, works for me. It's interesting. It's got this little bit of sweet neroli mixing with cardamom in the opening here. So there's some fresh facets to it, some spicy sweetness to it as well. It's lacking some of that DNA from the original, from the Eau de Toilette, from the Eau de Parfum. It's lacking a, a little bit um, that, that rich, you know, amber tobacco thing that the original has going on. The cashmere and jumps out right off the bat. You can pick that up right away. So for me, cardamom, neroli in the opening with cashmere and sitting right underneath that. So it's giving this kind of fuzziness to the fragrance, the way that it hops off your skin. A little bit of warmth from that uh, cashmere and there's cypress in the top as well, but the cypress is not as pronounced as the other notes in the, in the top. So the cardamom is the most noticeable, then the neroli. The neroli comes across sweet. Um, yeah, just a sweet neroli. And then that cashmere and the cypress, more nuance in the opening. I know that there's leather in the base of this fragrance as well. So I would imagine that that leather is going to come out more as the fragrance dries down. I'm a little bit biased because the One Eau de Toilette and the One Eau de Parfum are some of my favorite designer fragrances, that DNA. Uh, I've worn those fragrances for many, many years. They've done very well for me pulling compliments or just boosting my confidence in uh, date kind of situations. So I automatically kind of go into this looking for that specific DNA, trying to you know, pull it out from the fragrance. It's not in here. This is a nighttime sort of fragrance. It is a date kind of fragrance, potential compliment puller, absolutely. So it, it falls in line with the one Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum in the sense of when you might use the fragrance. But outside of that, there's not a huge similarity. This one has more of like a 
just a sweetness to it. The sweetness, not as much of a richness as the Eau de Parfum, the one Eau de Parfum. This one is sweeter to my nose, whereas the one Eau de Parfum was a little richer, deeper, uh, maybe a little headier. This one, sweet. It is still a warm kind of fragrance, a warm spiciness, just not quite as, uh, not quite as much depth as the one Eau de Parfum to my nose, just initial reaction. It does smell good though, and it is growing on me. It's growing on me for sure. The more that I smell it, the more I go, you know, it's pretty nice. I, I could wear that in a lot of situations. I imagine a lot of people are gonna like the way that smells. Gonna be one of those fragrances that's easy to wear around people because again, just mass appeal. Yeah, it's growing on me. It's growing on me, it is. Got this good amount of benzoin that's starting to come in. Uh, it kind of accentuates the cardamom because you've got this slightly, slightly dusty, semi-resinous sweetness that's working in with it. it. Smells good. Yeah, yeah, this is nice. It smells nice. The more that I smell this, as I said, the more it grows on me, the more I'm digging it. And uh, this one is one that I'm gonna wear over the next couple weeks. See how this works. See um, what the longevity is like and do a review on it. It's really pleasant. Next up, let's crack into this tower and see how this one is. Andy Tower, uh, Tower Perfumes have some fantastic fragrances. Some of the best fragrances that I've ever smelled in terms of just artistry with fragrances. And I don't think that Andy Tower is a big fan of um, reviewers in general on YouTube or Instagram or any social media, to be honest, but that's okay because I still love him. Okie dokie. So here we go, a little slip cover. And let me show you guys the presentation very quickly. So there is your slip cover. And then it's got a little see-through part on the back. And that will allow you to see through and see this, which has information on the fragrance that you have purchased. This one I bought off of Lucky Scent. I believe it was $135 for this 50 milliliter size bottle. And you have the name of the fragrance on a sticker on the side of your box here. And it's this little metal box. You slide it up like so. This comes off and then your fragrance is down inside. And each one of the bottles comes with a little card which Andy Tower has signed. So it says right here, enjoy Andy Tower. Handmade in Switzerland. And there is a good look at the bottle for you guys. I've wanted to get this one since it came out, and now I am pumped to finally get a hold of this and see how it smells. So let's go ahead and spray this on. So this one I believe is supposed to smell like uh, a meadow in the Swiss Alps. Mm, it smells good, <laughs> it smells nice. Green, woody, fresh, spicy. Yeah, this is very pleasant actually very wearable. Uh, some people will say that some of Tower's fragrances, while they're very high quality, artistic, uh, kind of masterpieces really, that some of them aren't all that easy to pull off in day-to-day -day wear. This one smells like it would be though. Well, as long as you like fragrances in this style. Pine needles, there's fur in here, uh, ambergris, lavender, some other florals, a little bit of sweetness from Tonka, a little creamy sweetness in here. Yeah, this is very pleasant. It's not overwhelming, doesn't come across too strongly, it doesn't assault your senses or anything like that. Uh, this is one that I think I could get some good use out of this coming spring. The florals are really kind of settling in underneath the woodier notes. The woody notes are are what's most prominent to my nose here, but a lot of fresh florals kind of sitting underneath those woods. Not quite as uh, cold or refreshing as I was expecting, because when I hear, you know, the air of the Swiss Alps, uh, and could just be, you know, the way I view it, and it's not realistic, but you think of like this brisk freshness from the mountain air, just like cold wind kind of hitting you whipping around. I don't get a whole lot of that. Uh, just a just a touch, but more so fresh, green, woody with floral nuances and a little bit of creamy sweetness as well. And a nice dose of what comes off like ambergris 
in here as well. Very aromatic, comes across unisex, something that I think either a man or a woman could pull off. Maybe uh, leaning, mm, well, no, not really. I was gonna say maybe leaning slightly masculine, but to me, I think unisex. Uh, as long as the woman doesn't mind a woody kind of scent. Although the more it stays on my skin, the more things balance out. The woods are obviously still there, still very prominent, but your other uh, other notes start to work in and become on a level playing field with the woods. High quality fragrance, very nice, glad to have it. Not on the level of something like LDDM, uh, Lair du Desert Maracan. Uh, apologies again for the French, but that one is an absolute masterpiece. I actually have it right here. This one. This is just amazing. One of my favorite fragrances of all time. Just smelling it from the bottle. This is the type of scent that, oh God, just so good. I'll spray it in the air just to smell it. Um, this one is not on the level of LDDM. Yeah, this one, but it's still a solid release. And I'll very quickly run back through the other two here to see if anything's changed all that much. Burning Barbershop darkened up a little bit. More of that smoke coming out. Quality, very good. Small hints of florals, just hints. Little pops here and there. More so vanilla, a little bit of smoke, as I mentioned. Some of that hay as well. Really nice, right up my alley. Glad I got it. And the one Eau de Parfum Intense. Ooh, sweet, very sweet. When you go from Burning Barbershop to the one Eau de Parfum Intense, it's just such a, ooh, such a leap from where this is at and where this is at. When you smell it by itself, it doesn't come off as uh, sweet. It's just when you hop from these fragrances to this one, it's like, oh, noticeable. Sweet, uh, warm, spicy, sexy, versatile, mass appealing. Cashmere in there, leather hasn't come out all that much, just a hint of it. Interested to see where this one goes. Don't know that it's gonna overtake the one Eau de Parfum or the one Eau de Toilette in terms of my personal rankings for the the one fragrances but i can see a lot of people really digging this one and with that guys i'm going to wrap this video up thanks for hanging out with me today and checking out these three fragrances the one eau de parfum intense burning barbershop and l'air des alps suisse <laughs> thanks for hanging out with me guys i appreciate all your support and i'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video see you guys